Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kelsey. I'm Kelsey Oki here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and I'm helping you to get fat on your hands. I haven't been around very much lately. I had to have major shoulder surgery. I had torn my rotator cuff completely and I had a labrum tear. So I had a little bit of work I had to have done. Nothing really that I had done in my handstand practice or in my yoga practice, although maybe I had made it worse. Just something that had happened gradually over time. It's been bothering me since I had babies. I just never really looked into it. I honestly just didn't really want to deal with it. But the time came, I was forced to deal with it, fixed it all, it's healing great, just had an ultrasound done on it. I've gotten the A-OK -okay to get back on your hands, start building that strength. So I'm super excited to rebuild my handstand and I'm gonna take you guys on that journey with me. So all these things that we're gonna be doing today are things that I thought, okay, maybe not totally beginner, but they're the things that I'm gonna be using to get strong and to get flexible and to build that endurance back up with my handstand. I know you wanna know those things, so let's get right to it. The first thing that you need to do is stretch out those hamstrings. Stretch out the hamstrings and stretch out the shoulders. So if you don't want, if you want that really nice, straight, open, tall, long handstand, you gotta have a certain level of flexibility. Obviously, it takes a lot of skill and strength and focus, but if your hamstrings aren't open and your shoulders aren't open, say so you can only lift your arms to here and the armpit doesn't get totally open, we gotta work on getting that arm open and lifted. Otherwise, you're never gonna find that straight line and you're gonna have a banana back. So hang out with those stretches. As you see, when I go into this forward fold, legs are straight, knees are bent, that's okay. That's where you're at. If you have a lot of tension behind the knees, that's okay. You can even put a pillow under your knees or over your thighs, but lean in, hinging at the hips, long spine, heart lifted and lengthened, and then fold over your legs. Like I said, a little bit don't really matter, but if you can straighten the legs, straighten the legs. So you're reaching all the way from the heel through the sit bone so that it's nice and long. My legs are active, so I'm not just yinning, although you could, you could totally do that too, but I like a nice deep, more like Ashtanga type stretch. So the legs are engaged, I'm activating the quads, I'm pressing down through the backs of the knees, like I said, lengthening the leg, and then I'm leaning with a nice long spine. And then hang out here. Hang out here without the frustration and the cringing, and the holding of the breath, which I know is very natural. When something's uncomfortable, we tend to just like, like, like hang up. You have to relax, let go, and breathe. When you breathe, you tell your mind, your mind tells your body, I'm in a safe place, I'm okay, I can handle this, help me grow here. So let go in those forward folds. Hang out there. I, I would encourage you to stay for a full minute if you can. Another option is to take that fold against the wall. So put your butt against the wall, feet anywhere between one and two feet away, and then fold over the legs here too. So this is a little bit more relaxing because I'm just kind of like erasing. And hang out there, all right? So get that good stretch on. I also want you to think about stretching out the shoulders. I knew that this was important before, but holy Moses, I don't know if you knew this, but when they fix your shoulder, they fix a rotator cuff tendon, they tend to overcompensate and tighten it more, <laughs> which leaves that shoulder like holy mackerel, so tight and held in there really well. <laughs> so the stretching has been imperative. So I like using a foam roller, but you can do this with just your mat. Roll those shoulders open. I'm kind of starting in a child's pose position and just letting those arms reach, drop the head in and hang out. Basically like a puppy pose, kind of. So you could do this without the foam roller. Just oh, walk the hands down, drop the throat, drop the chest, forehead maybe. You may find it a little easier with the knees open. Gives you a little bit more balance. And as you're here a little bit longer, you know, come off the forehead, maybe the chin, maybe the chest. Soften into it, let go. Let's stay here for a few more breaths. Walk the hands away. Soften what you can. Okay, you can also do this on the wall. Not a great angle to show you, but just, you know, just if you were in puppy pose on the floor, walk the hands up, drop the chest. Now my feet are about two, two feet away from the wall, or so maybe even two and a half, three. And I'm dropping my head between my arms and just stretching it out. So. Take advantage of that time to stretch before you handstand. It's gonna 
make a huge difference. Now, my wrists are already very mobile, maybe too mobile, but that might be another thing that you need to spend a little bit of time in, is stretching out the wrists, stretching out the forearms. You don't have to spend a lot of time, but spend, geez, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds just stretching out these different areas, and you're gonna notice a huge improvement. Way less likely to get injured, and you're gonna find like, wow, when I kicked up, it actually held for me that time. It's not just strength, you gotta have the mobility and the flexibility as well. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is that shaping. The shape of a straight body handstand is exhausting. Honestly, like, I would rather do a scorpion handstand than I would a straight body handstand because it's extremely challenging, requires a lot of focus, and every single muscle in your body has to be turned on. And that goes for your mind as well because the focus, it's intense, you know, that's why I think of it as a moving meditation. So let's work on that shape on the ground at first that way, when you are on your hands, your mind has already been there, it recognizes it, and it's much more likely to go into that straight body shape much quicker, hold on to it longer, because it's not so overwhelmed. It's been here before, in a safe place, on the ground. So on your back, lengthen the legs, reach the arms up and overhead. Now, if the hands don't come all the way to the floor, that's okay, that's, you got tight shoulders, you're not quite there yet, but as much as you can, really reach from fingertips to toes. Now what's important in this position as well is to draw the ribs in. Draw all the ribs in towards each other, belly button pulls towards the spine, and then we're gonna tilt our pelvis underneath us. So you may even have to like lift your butt and tip your pelvis underneath you. You don't wanna pop your butt out, that's an anterior tilt, instead you want a posterior tilt where you're scooping the pelvis up. You wanna feel like you're gluing your low back to the floor. This is a great shape to hold. Let's work for it, you know, maybe about a minute. I don't have a timer with me, but we'll just do our best. Keep lengthening. Lift up through the pelvic floor, pull down through the belly button. And you're gonna have to tell yourself this again and again. When I'm not here, what do I need to activate? What is not working okay? Are the toes pointed? Or the feet flexed if you need that instead of the toe point, because you're not there yet. That can cause a big foot cramp. Are my quads engaged? Am I pushing down through the back of the knee? Is that belly button towards the spine? Is my low back touching towards the floor? Shoulders rising up to the ears. Fingers glued together, or even the hands flex back. Check again in with that low back. Scoop the pelvis underneath you. Let's stay here for 10 more seconds. Keep breathing. Keep breathing in this position. Stay nice and calm. Reach a little further. Scoop a little more. Couple more seconds. You got this. There, nice, let it go. All right, now let's do that same thing, but on our belly. So, I know, it's a face smasher, you'll be fine. You're fine. Go onto your belly and do the same thing. But now, I want you to feel like you're drawing your belly button up off the floor. Whether it touches or comes off the floor or not, I don't care, that doesn't make a difference. It's just the fact that you, again, are scooping the pelvis. This time it's gonna feel like you're pressing your pelvic um, bone into the floor more, glue your tailbone down towards your heels, still reaching from fingertip to toes, shoulders rise up to the ears. Let's do it. So reach the arms, drop the forehead. Drop the forehead all the way down, and let's reach. Now if you want, you can even go so far as to reach the arms up off the ground, make the shoulders work a little bit more. Remember, tailbone towards heels. Pelvic floor is glued in, pelvic bone is pushing into the floor. Ribs are drawing in, pull the ribs in, lift the belly button off the floor. Keep reaching, shoulders rise, activate those legs. A little foot cramp, it's all right. When you're learning to engage new muscles or you're working muscles that haven't worked for a while, they're gonna fight back, that's okay. So listen to them, like, okay, my foot's really cramping, I'm stretching it out, but not everything has to come out of this position. Just the foot that's cramping has to. So work with what's happening, stay aware, stay active. Couple more seconds, keep reaching, keep holding, ribs in, belly button in, legs active. All right, let's go ahead and come out. All right, now we're gonna work the core a little bit because Ooh, as important as it is to work the shoulders, and it's super important to work the shoulders and handstand, if you want a straight line, you really gotta work that core. So go back onto your back again. Go into that hollow body shape. <clears throat> Arms reach up and overhead. 
Ugh, shoulders tight still. And now I am going to have you take the low back to the floor, and you're going to do this not only by tucking the pelvis underneath you, but pull the left knee in towards the belly. You see when you pull the left knee in, you're able to glue the low back to the floor. Now let's hold it for 10, 9, 8, 7. Keep the low back on the floor. 6, 5, 4. Lengthen. 3, 2, one, switch legs, pull the right knee in, lengthen through the left, get that low back on the floor as best you can. 10, 9, 8, 7, shoulders are up by the ears, 6, 5, 4, back is blue down, 3, 2, 1, let's switch one more time, hold it for 10, 9, 8, 7, most important thing is that low back is down, belly button pulls in, 5, 4, Three, two, and one. Last switch. Right knee in. One, two. Low back is down. Right. Three. Am I going the wrong way? Four, five, six, seven. Keep reaching. Eight. Leg is active. Nine, and ten. Okay. Whew. Like I said, my shoulder is still so tight, and that's okay. Tight. I can work with. Less strong. I can work with. All right, now let's start building a little bit of strength. Where did I leave my candy dandy timer? Timer. All right, so planks are where it's at, you guys. That's gonna work everything. The shoulders, the core, the legs, the mind that has to focus. Let's hold a minute long plank. If you're with me, you're with me. If you hang out there till 30 seconds, that's fine too. I'm gonna shake. The body is relearning strength and all that weakness is starting to fade and the strength is coming back in. You may shake. Who friggin' cares? Let it happen, and let's build that strength together. So, regular plank, hands down, and let's get at it. I got five seconds ready, and here we go. Come into position. Hands are right under shoulders, let's hold. So make sure that you are pushing out of the shoulders a little protraction. You can have the feet together, you can have the feet apart, you can walk them in and out for all I care. It doesn't really make a difference. Belly button is towards spine, low ribs are pulled in, a little protraction of the shoulder blades. Lift the kneecaps, make the legs work, okay? You can even push through the heels or stack them right over the balls of the feet. Up to you. Hey, hey, we're already halfway, so if you made it to 30 seconds, good for you. Do your work, do your work, you got this. Press right through the base of the heel of the hand, the base of the thumb and the index finger. Don't put the weight on that pinky edge. All right, come on, hang in there with me. If you're going for that full minute, 15 more seconds. Keep breathing. Dirty mat. Stay with me. Less than 10. Push, push, push. Push the floor away, resist gravity. Three, two, and one. Go ahead, lower the knees. Good. I'm really, I'm really going all out for you guys with a fancy timer that I probably got on Amazon that you can't even hear and I have to count for you. But you know what? I think that just goes to show you that people want to learn how to work hard. They don't need all that fancy, you know, I don't know, do dad things. <laughs> so thanks for hanging there with me on my cheap timer. And you know what? I think the nice thing about that cheap timer, I'm letting you rest a minute before we do the forearm plank. I think the nice thing about the cheap timer is that you just have to trust me. You just have to trust your body that you can do it. You don't need to see 10, 8, 7, you know, counting down. You can just know you can do it. The mind's playing tricks on you. If you think you have to know how much time there is, I'm not gonna leave you there till you die, I promise. So just let go of that. Let go of having to know how much longer do I have. You got this, it doesn't matter. You can do anything you set your mind to. All right, so let's prepare to come into that forearm plank. If you can keep the forearms parallel, I would have you do that. Make sure that they're only shoulders width. You'll know that by grabbing the opposite elbow. But if like me, you have very tight shoulders right now, and you need to interlace your hands, do that. We got one minute. I'm gonna give you five seconds to get ready. Alrighty, come on, let's get into it. We got one minute, forearm plank, let's go. Same kind of things apply, but this time we're pressing not just out of the heel of the hand, but all the way up the forearm and out of the elbows. A little protraction out the shoulder blades. Low belly is pulling in. We're already down 15 seconds. Not like 15 seconds down, but we were down 15 seconds. Legs are engaged. Pelvic is tucked. We're not popping the booty out. That's cheating. Instead, tuck it underneath you. Belly button pulls in towards spine. 30 seconds done. You've already done 30. So if you did that, awesome job. 
Breath is smooth, mind is calm, I know it sucks. You can just think about how much it sucks. Or you could think about like the ABCs, like sing the ABCs in your head. Or think, oh, I only got 15 seconds left, I'm hanging in there. You can, you know, sing your favorite chorus to, you know, the song that you like that's out right now. Do things to distract your mind. Or even just count. There's lots of ways to get through these. Oh, one second. Nice job. See, I was rambling on, I lost track, and that's so much better than when I just do my planks and I just stare at the clock. When I just stare at the clock, I'm like, oh my God, I'm dying, I cannot do this. So use your planks. Your planks will help you get strong for handstand. I know they suck. Who loves plank? I mean, I do, I love plank, but most people don't. <laughs> it's understandable. You know when you'll start to love plank? When you do your plank. Do more planks and you'll learn to love them. Of course, I say that, but I don't like doing V-sits or V-ups, and that's why I hate them. Okay, one more little core engager. That's gonna work those shoulders, and then we're gonna get to doing some handstandy things. Okay, all right, let's do it. So start into a tabletop position, and we're just gonna lift the knees. Let's start with 30 times, see how that feels. Sorry, my neck's so dirty. Cat's coming down here all the time. So tabletop position, hands right under shoulders, <clears throat> knees underneath the hips, and let's just push into the tops of the feet, Pull the knees up off the floor, work the core. Let's go for 30 times. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep pushing. Make sure that upper back is rounded. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, yeah, 30 is gonna do. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, halfway. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, you got this, 23, 24, you can do hard things, right? 27, 28, 29, and 30. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna move my mat. Now at this point, we're gonna have to do this stuff um, more towards the wall. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I don't have a pause option, so I'm just going to move the camera, bear with me. Hang in there. Oh, that's way too bright. Sorry, hang in there. Okay. Oh, wait, okay, 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 okay. Now we are going to start with just some holds. The holds are what's gonna build that strength in the forearms and through the wrists. I know some people have said, how do I get my wrists to stop hurting? Well, you can lift weights with just your wrists, build those forearms, um, but really get on your hands. Use those plates, use your down dogs, get on your hands. There may be six months to a year where your wrists are a little bit sore. If they're achy, it's fine. I don't want them in so much pain. You can't stand it, don't do that. But do put some weight into your hands. That is how they're going to get strong, okay? So let's just come into an L hold. You'll know if it's an L hold because you're gonna start standing, put your leg up against the wall. That's what it's gonna look like, but upside down. So where the standing foot is, that's where your hands are gonna go. All right. So again, I'm gonna work on a one minute hold. I'm gonna switch legs halfway through, but I'm gonna let you know when we hit 15 seconds. So if you need to switch, you're gonna switch then, all right? We got five seconds to come into position. So hands down and put your feet on the wall, all right? Here we go. Hands down, feet up, take an L. All right, start with lifting the right leg and hold. See how my foot is flexed? You don't want to do this over back point thing. Try to drop the hip into place, reach through the heel. If you're only doing 30 seconds, it's time to switch. Right foot down, left foot up. Keep pushing out of the shoulders. Push, push, push. Reach into that right heel, or I'm sorry, left heel. If you're coming down at 30 seconds, you got two seconds. Last one, let's switch again. Those of you that are staying the whole minute, right leg back up. Keep pushing, pushing, low belly pulls in, reach to the right heel, it's time to switch, right foot down, left foot up. You got this, last 14 seconds. Keep breathing, stay calm. You can do this, last five, four, three, two, one. Just bend the right knee, kind of walk down off the wall. If you're very busy, Inhale, inhale when you come back up. Maybe even lean your butt against the wall, work that hamstring stretch again. If the legs are like, or I'm sorry, not the legs, but the shoulders are really tired, just drape the arms and relax. 
you notice yourself getting very, very dizzy, it means you need to drink more water. You're probably not used to going up, down, up, down, up, down. That does take some practice, okay? So that's something that you would do up to three times, maybe 30 seconds on each leg. I don't usually stay in a handstand much more than a minute without giving my wrist a reprieve, but if you've been doing handstand for a very long time, you're pretty advanced, you certainly could go longer, a minute and a half, two minutes, but that takes a lot of time. So anybody that's new, max out at 30 seconds, maybe at a minute, build up to that. But that's something that you could do three times, but for now, let's just do one because we're just starting to build that strength back up, right? All right, so if you wanna do more, go ahead and pause it. The next thing we're gonna do is kickups. Kickups are so important. People say to me all the time, all I do is kick up and kick up and kick up and kick up and nothing ever happens, I'm not getting better at it. Yes, you are. You are building strength and you are building confidence and awareness when being upside down. I'm telling you, when you're upside down, nothing makes sense anymore. So that kick up is super important. All right, so let's do 10 on both legs, 10 on each leg. So hands down, shoulders width, Make sure you're pressing out of those hands. And then you're gonna lift the hips. You're kind of in a dog, down dog position. I'm gonna start with my good leg because who doesn't wanna start with their good leg? I'm gonna kick up off my right leg. I'm gonna lift this left leg. Right leg's gonna bend. Okay, see how this little hinge happens? Push, push, push. If you start to collapse into the arms, that's where you're gonna fail. You have to have very strong arms. Keep pushing out of the shoulder. So a little bend to the right knee, kick up. And then land the same way. See how I already started to bend through that knee? Up and down. Now say you don't get that high. That's okay. We got seven more. Kick up. You don't even have to hold. I just want you pushing out of the shoulders. That's already five. Last few. Keep kicking up. That right leg's got it. Legs are strong and active. Shoulders are pushing. One more. Kick up and come back down. Maybe shake out the wrist a little bit. I think shaking is a really nice way to reduce that inflammation, encourage circulation. And if they're hurting you at all, if you're new to handstand, shake them, drag them. It's a great way to do it. And I don't even know what these are called, but like jazz fingers or something. <laughs> do those. All right, let's kick up off of the left leg. Maybe this is your good leg. I hope that it is. It's my sucky leg, <laughs> but we gotta do both, okay? So hands down, right under shoulders. You know, and you'll find your perfect hand position. People ask that a lot as well. You will find it. The more times you kick up in your handstand, the more time you spend in handstand, the more you will find what feels best for you. Don't go too wide, don't go too narrow. Hands can turn in slightly or out. That's just gonna matter with how tight your shoulders and your wrists are. Let what your position is be right, okay? Let's do that left side. So we're gonna reach into the right leg, a little bending off the left knee. Here we go, 10 times, ready? Up, a little clunkier on this side. Two, three, four, five. Doesn't have to be as high, right? You don't have to hit the wall, six, Seven, three more, eight, nine, last one, kick it up, ten. All right. So again, if you're a little bit more advanced, if you've done a bunch of hand standing, do two more sets of that. That way you do 30 on the right leg and 30 on the left leg. But to keep this a little bit shorter, I'm going to move on. So if you want to do that, pause it here. Do your kick up some old legs. Get them in. Next thing we're going to work on is stag alternatives. I know you've seen these in other videos. I think it's a really nice way to keep the weight in the hands to work on that nice shape while getting tiny little bits of float time. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to kick up and we're going to make a stag leg. So one leg bent forward, one leg bent back. I'm going to move it back a little bit further. And then I'm going to switch legs. So up, see how both legs should be bent about 90 degrees. And I don't want a banana back, so I'm not leaning in. I want the pelvis pointing straight up. And I'm gonna switch, switch, switch. Okay, I fell a little sick, but you know what we're gonna do now. So let's just do what we can for a minute. And if you fall, and I may fall too, you just kick right back up. Do not go like, well, she didn't fall, or this is too hard, just, just get back up. Just get right back up and get back at it. And that's how you're gonna get better and more confident on your hands. Don't waste time worrying about a fall. It's gonna happen a million times, okay? So you got five seconds to kick up 
and then a minute of kicking back and forth stag legs. Here we go. Timer set, three seconds to get there. Okay, and switch. And I like to do it just with my toe because that encourages me to put as much weight into my hands as possible, but you could do feet. You can do your whole foot. I just kind of like the tip of my big toe. I think it makes it feel like I gotta do more of the work with my upper body. 30 seconds already in, so if you need to come down, come down. Keep going if you can. Make sure you're pressing, pushing out of those hands. I'm definitely too close to the wall here. I should have backed up more. You know what, I'm gonna come down and fix it. Cause like I just said to you, who freaking cares, right? The idea is that we just keep working. 15 seconds. Keep doing those stats. Kind of running off of the wall, right? Last three, two, and one. Go ahead and come down. Whew. So now maybe your wrists are starting to talk. I know my wrists are starting to get a little chirpy. You need to make sure that you're listening when the wrists talk. Achy, sore, tired, tense, that's cool. And we're building strength. But if you have one spot that's like kind of screeching, screaming at you, red, teary, searing feeling, please just back away from that. Go ice, um, even like an ice bucket, and just let the wrist rest for today. It can be a little difficult and painful while you build up that strength through such a small, I mean mine, that's a small friggin' joint. So please be kind, please be kind to your wrist. I've also dealt with long-term wrist issues. It seems to be a lot better than it used to be. Probably that nice long rest the shoulder gave it, but I'm telling you, like messing with the knees, you don't wanna mess with the wrist. They just, they're not very nice about it. Okay, the other thing we're going to do, the last one we're gonna do are knee holds. Our, I don't know what do they call them, thunderbolt or something like, yes, yeah, thunderbolt, or charger, charger legs, that's what they're called. Okay, so we'll do one minute. Let me show you what they look like. We're gonna do 30 seconds on each leg, or maybe we do a whole minute on each leg, I don't know, what do you think? So you're gonna kick up, and I'm just gonna go tiptoes on, let's say, my left leg and my right leg is going to reach straight up. Now the other alternate you could do is the right heel in and the left knee towards the belly. Now this one engages the core more. Up to you if you wanna do the toe touching or the knee pulling in and the heel touching the wall. You pick, but let's do 30 seconds per leg. Check out those wrists. Let's try to do it all at one time. If you fall, kick right back up, all right? Here we go, we got five seconds to kick up. And then you find your version of a version <laughs> of a charger. Like, here we go, kick up. I'm gonna do left toes in, right leg reaches. Well, I say left toes in, I guess I meant like the knee pulls in, the toes on the wall. <laughs> Keep pushing out of the hands, push. You don't wanna start to dump. Instead, actively push the floor away, reach the tailbone towards the heels. You got this. Five more seconds on this leg, okay? Keep reaching that right leg straight up. All right, let's switch. Just the right toes are touching. Left leg is reaching. I'm even activating the left quad. The tailbone is reaching towards the heel. Now remember, you could, you could do the left heel in and the right knee in more towards the belly. Either one's fine. Last 10 seconds, keep pushing, stay focused, keep breathing. Five, four, three, two, and one. Come down nice and easy. Notice when I come down, I allow the knees to bend. Let me go over those come downs with you real quick because if you're very new to handstanding, I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen. Probably should've talked about this at the beginning, I'm sorry. As you're finding out about me, I'm all over the place sometimes. So as you come down, we don't just clunk. Even that, I kind of had to guide, because if you come down one or two feet at the same time, flat foot, you're gonna hurt your heels, you're gonna hurt your knees, you're gonna hurt your hips, those joints, they don't like that. Instead, create a little bit of a bounce. The knees do that, the ankles do that, the hips do that. Let them take that impact, okay? So bend, ball of the foot, not flat foot, okay? Let's try that. So when you're up and you're coming down, I like to do one leg at a time. Let that right knee bend, ball of the toe, okay? Maybe practice it with the other leg too. So that left leg comes down, ball of the toe, bend the knee, embrace that impact. Don't just plunk it, all right? 
So really good job, guys. Those are some of the drills I'm gonna be using to get the strength back in my shoulders, get the confidence back in my hands. Timer says I talk too much. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed that today. If you were really dizzy going up and down and up and down, drink your water. You can do it, you gotta do it. Otherwise you're going to get dizzy. Make sure that you share this video on your social media. Get somebody handstanding with you. You guys can take this journey on together a little bit every day, 15, 20 minutes a day on your hands. Maybe not seven days a week, but four or five. The key to getting good at handstands is doing your handstands. Somebody told me that here on YouTube. I wish I knew who it was, but one of the top reasons you're not good at handstand is you don't do enough handstand. If you did more handstand, you'd feel confident there. So, oh, you know the other tip? I have a sign, I have a sign that says, what a difference a year can make. So don't expect your handstand to be perfect because you did this video. Give yourself a year. Give yourself six months and say, I wanna know that in six months I can kick up and get all the way to the wall instead of halfway to the wall. In six months, I wanna be able to hold it five seconds. Now maybe you can't do a flat back. Maybe you gotta do stag legs. Who flicking, <laughs> flicking, who flicking cares? <laughs> Just make yourself a goal and then stick with your practice because you can do hard things. Thank you so much for getting back on your mat with me today, guys. I'm so glad to be back. My shoulder's so happy to be with you. Let's handstand together. Have a great day. Namaste.